Welcome back. This is the Homeschooling Legacy. Thank you for joining us and don't forget to subscribe for more interviews. Today I have a guest. Yes, she goes by the name of Ejima. Greetings, Ejima. Welcome. Greetings, Ziga. Thank yes. you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. So today we're going to talk about your experience in homeschooling. Uh, so tell me, how did the journey begin and what made you decide on homeschooling? It began from pregnancy. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. So it was the, it's the whole package. Everything we do is from the home. Mm -hmm. The birth is from the home. Okay. The meals are from the home. So the education is from the home. Oh, wonderful. So how many children do you have? Two. Two. An eight-year-old boy and a 15-year-old girl. Great. Yes. Awesome. So, um... Did you have any kind of preconceived ideas about homeschooling before you had your own children? No, no, I didn't even know anything. I didn't even know it was an option. Okay. It was, it was a thing. Right. I didn't even know. Okay. All of this is for my husband. Okay. Yes. Me, myself, I'm, I was just a regular woman going through the motion. My mind was corporate this and corporate yes. that and the rest of this. Mm -hmm. So he's the one who said, wait a minute. Are you aware there is another way? Mm, yes. So that's where the discussion started. And once you are made aware mm -hmm. of the options and mm -hmm. what you are being offered, right? then you decide, is the alternative good mm -hmm. or is the normal what I'm going for? Right. So right. Once you understand that mm -hmm. there are some things, using yourself as an example, right, the education right. that you got, mm -hmm. the experience in the school system, Mm -hmm. If you are okay with it, then I guess you go ahead and place your children in it. Mm -hmm. But once you are made aware of the things that you yourself you were not even aware before, mm -hmm. then you said, okay, I could do things differently. Yes. Right. I could take the power. Mm -hmm. I could take responsibility, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Right. Great. Yeah. So, like you said, you know, um, having that, you know, experience of being in school yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, the traditional way that they say most push us towards yeah. sending the children to mm -hmm. a school. Yes. So, what would you say some of the, the benefits of home education compared to yourself being, you know, in school? Uh, yes, uh, the benefit, me, the benefit is uh, having to be with my children all day. Yes, <laughs> the quality time. Yes. Okay. And there is no urgency. Right. There is no restrictions. There right. is no box that we have to fit into. Right. For example, my daughter, she was super active. Mm -hmm. So imagine putting her in a in a school where everybody has to sit at a desk mm -hmm. for X amount of time. Right. She would be mm -hmm. called the the disturbance of the class. Right. Yes. Yes. So for me, that was one of the things that straight away made me aware that I can't put her. In. Mm. So, uh, through her lessons in the day, we start from the kitchen because I spend most of my time in the kitchen. Okay, yes. We start from the kitchen and then it, it runs all through the room. Mm -hmm. Through the room. Sometimes you go in the washroom and she come with her book. Mm -hmm. So it goes on all through the house. Right. And if it happens that we have to step out, mm -hmm. whatever we're doing with the workbooks, mm -hmm. we close them, mm -hmm. we go out, we're pointing at colors. Numbers, right. structures, yeah. shapes. So mm -hmm. our learning system was environmental as okay. well. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, great. So um, you know, as you got into homeschooling, um, how did you ensure like you were having a well-rounded curriculum? Uh, I am fortunate that my mother-in-law mm -hmm. is a teacher. Okay. A retired teacher mm -hmm. from the state, so. Every year she will send us all these books. Okay. You know, and I have the assessment books. Mm -hmm. And I was also following the milestones, you know, okay. wow. depending on your age and there are some things you should be able to do. Mm -hmm. Which of course we're always above and beyond the milestone. Yes. So once you see the pattern that we are always ahead, mm -hmm. there was no um, urgency to be measuring and testing and I just let her flow at her own pace. Okay. Nice. And was that a particular curriculum that you were able to 
follow? Initially, in the early years, mm -hmm. we didn't stick with any curriculum. Mm -hmm. We just went with the basic forms. Right, okay. Arithmetic, mm -hmm. reading and writing. Mm -hmm. That's how we went. And then eventually we incorporated history, African history, mm -hmm. and then yeah. uh, daily life, yes. life skills. Yes. Yes. Until we got to a point where I think that was from seven years, mm -hmm. we uh, there is this brother Kamori. Okay. Samori Kamara. Okay. She has the Kamali Academy. Okay. It's African centers. And it's a homeschooling. It's a homeschooling. Uh, um, how do you call it? It's a co-op. No, it's online. Oh, okay, it's the online. Kamali Academy. Okay. So you sign up, okay. and then you pay him yearly, mm -hmm. and the curriculums are. All right. Prepared. Okay. And it's wonderful. a lot of hands on activities that okay. you have to get. There was a lot of resources. Resources oh, wonderful. abounded. Okay. So, really needing a specific curriculum wasn't mm -hmm. a challenge. Yes. We went through so many curriculums. Mm. And then, of course, online too, there are all these other. Yes, yes. a lot of resources yeah. online. Mm. Get to a point where you don't even know which one to choose. Right. So, yeah. so that's great. So, again, um, for those who are starting off their homeschooling journey as a parent, um, you can testify to say, you know, you don't have to have a teaching background to, no, to homeschool. No, you are the best teacher there is. Right. You know your child more than anybody else. You can teach them better than anybody else. Yes. Unless you let them manipulate you, <laughs> then you're not going to get any yeah. work done. But if you have a system going already, because with babies, mm -hmm. starting from infants, we have to create structures for them yeah, for how sure. their day flows. So mm -hmm. as they are growing, you just incorporate whichever little lessons that you are going to add into it. Mm -hmm. And like right. I tell everybody, in the beginning, with a toddler and uh, early years, don't yeah. stress it. Yeah. You know, it's more about reading and writing and comprehension mm -hmm. and be able to articulate whatever they hear, to retell. Right. For me, that's what I focused on most of anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wonderful. So, um, whilst you were home educating your two children, what were some of the major challenges and how you overcome? Mm. The major challenge for me is my own self-judgment. Okay. You know, because okay. it, it's, a, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a responsibility that you have taken on to yourself. So mm -hmm. ever so often, this there is this part of me that really comes out to ask, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Okay. Are you sure you're qualified? Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're not harming your children rather than helping them? Mm -hmm. You know. And then too, there is also this societal uh, judgment that comes into play. Right, yes, yeah, sure. You have to send them to school, you are right. not getting socialized, and mm -hmm. you're not a teacher, you're not qualified to teach them, you don't have the background. And mm. For me, those were the challenges. Yes, you know? yes, it's a big challenge. Yes, to, to find the center to be on force mm -hmm. and to know that you're doing what is right. Well, as you were saying, you know, you followed um, curriculums that had benchmarks, that guidelines and everything, but because of society, and obviously when you're going out, uh, you know, majority of children in Ghana here are sending yeah, their children school. to school, yes. and then you can see, well, they don't have a uniform on. Well, yes. Where is the school? And they're <laughs> they always asking you, right. where do you go to school? What's yes. the name of your school? So yes. we even came up with the name, just right. to satisfy that question, right? <laughs> Right. We, we were not even, um, for so long, I wasn't mm. worried about grading or, right. because I realized that mm -hmm. she was always intermediate. Mm -hmm. She was in this subject, she's ahead, in this subject, she's right. behind. Okay. So I didn't bother with placing her in any specific grade level. Okay, so like you would do exams and those and things. Then, yes, so in most subjects, whereas she's taking a fourth grade math, mm -hmm. she may be taking a fifth grade language arts. Okay. And science. Right. So mm -hmm. it was it was going at her own pace. Right, yes. You know. I mean don't forget also when we homeschool it is more um intense learning because mm -hmm. it's so focused on just one, you know, child or you've yes. got the whole like say a whole day's worth of work in a classroom full of twenty five to thirty children is equivalent to maybe one or two hours. And even 
with home. the homeschooling, I find we cover more ground. Right, exactly. Yeah, yes, so you're specialized. Yes. Tell me, you know, what advice would you give to a parent who's looking to now homeschool and in terms of um, financially, you know, um, running a business um, or what advice would you give a parent who's looking to still, you know, keep some nine to five job or something because it's not an easy thing to manage um, running a business, working and then homeschooling because that's one of the challenges that we face mm-hmm. is actually bringing in money for our family so that we can keep going. And with home ed, it becomes a full-time job in itself. Yes. So what advice would you give those parents who are struggling to make that um, lifestyle change? Because it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle in itself. Mm. If you have your 9 to 5, it will be difficult for you to implement a successful in school mm. uh, process. I would say that you will have to then bring in assistance. Okay. Yes. You have to find teachers in the different subjects where you want them to take mm-hmm. and then you structure it in the way that uh, they can be there to make sure the children cover mm-hmm. all that they need to cover. Unless, of course, your children are grown, mm-hmm. then they can self-tutor. Right. Then at the end mm-hmm. of the day, you have to come and check how many steps they've covered mm-hmm. with how many hours. Okay. You know? Because homeschooling, it's, it's like having, it's an entrepreneurial venture. Okay, so you, you know, recommend you have to that be having your yeah. own business so that because when you have a business, mm-hmm. it's also part of the homeschool right. because your mm-hmm. children are involved in the things that you do. Right. When we yeah. started, the wearing any support group, okay. there were very few of us, yeah. very few of us with little children getting into the homeschooling section. Right. And all of us lived so far apart. Your youngest is how old? Eight. Your youngest is eight. And so how are you feeling now that you've had, say, 15 years of... Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've done it for 15 years, yes. but it's still a challenge. It's still right. every day. We're taking a day at a time. Wow. Because especially as they are growing older, yes. I, I can't teach... Mm. I can't teach um, upper elementary right. and high school. and I can only assist. Okay, yeah. right. So now my eldest, she's taking power homeschool online. Okay, wow. And my youngest, mm-hmm. he is still, we still have a lot of resources. So yes. So it becomes more challenging yeah. the older they are. Yes. So because are you very right now? You have to really cover specific right, you know, subjects. And yeah, that you know. Then you have to know where you are going next. Mm-hmm. Right, I see. Yeah. So um, how flexible are you in terms of? You know, getting your children, say, into a school now that they reach the age of uh, looking at high school, we colleges. I think she she's going all the way. In the whole school. Yes, she's going all the way until even college. She her mind is not even. Is not there. on there. Yes. Okay. Yes. She said her she interest might. is not. Yeah, she says she might, but right now she doesn't feel like. Okay. She will want. To. Yes, so we're still just progressing, okay. doing a lot of activities, mm-hmm. you know, different, different subjects. Recently, she just started doing a business one-on-one, oh, wow. yeah. and at home, she mm-hmm. helps with running the store, mm-hmm. takes inventory, does sales. Mm-hmm. So for us, because yeah. we are entrepreneurs, yeah. we're not really worried about college so much. It's more mm-hmm. of her learning hands-on trade, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. that she can really understand. Okay that she can really engage in. Yes, yeah. that's wonderful. Yes, so you've heard it from Ejima today. Don't forget to subscribe to find out some more lovely stories on homeschooling and families who are making that step to home education. Stay tuned for more. See you next time.